today's conversation, we're going to talk about how to determine the true length of an arc as it relates to building a home. The project that the students have in hand that is making objects here for our sheet metal class. Right now, we're focused on making the cone right here. And what we did was we went ahead and inside our folder under projects, important geometry information, descriptive geometry calculator, we have our actual calculator. It's an Excel spreadsheet. Formula you need to know is right here. T is the dimension we're after. The radius divided by the side times 360 is how we get that information. This internal angle will define the length of the arc, this entire length that we need. The way to do that is a spreadsheet that does it for you, but I need you to know the information to understand how to derive the data if you do not have the spreadsheet. The height of the object per the dimensions that were assigned, the height of this object is five inches. The diameter of the object, the base diameter is four inches. The hypotenuse of this right triangle, when you think about that's literally what it is. If I drew a line straight down, it does make a right triangle. That's what you see here. The height, the radius. This side, I'm just going to copy it over, is actually the S information that you're at, which is also the radius. You think of it that way when you're thinking about your circle. So over here, I'm going to go ahead and draw a circle that shows you the large object. Now for dimension T, I can run the numbers or I can plug in the information right here. I'm going to plug it in. The diameter is 4 and the height is 5. Okay, there's pi. There's your radius. Okay, there's your slant height, your hypotenuse, whatever word you would like to use. Surface area base, surface area top, total surface area volume. T value, we're after those a little further down, which is the actual angle, which is the flat angle degree of T. So I need you to see, yes, this is an Excel. Yes, I can use Excel for more than money. E37, see that E37 divided by F37 divided by F37 multiplied by 360. That's why the answer is 133.7 degrees. So over here in AutoCAD, I want to replicate 133.7 degrees. So one of the things that you're going to realize is this, this line's at an odd angle. I don't have a clean way to rotate it and retain this line. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to rotate first this line so that it goes straight down. But how do I do that when I don't really know what angle it's at? When you go to rotate, Pick the object, hit enter, pick its end point, which is where you're going to rotate it from. Click one, right mouse button, and pick reference. Pick end point to end point of how you rotate this object. I'm dropping it dead center at the bottom. That way, when I do the next step, which is rotating it 133.7 degrees, I know exactly that it's going to be 133.7 degrees from vertical. That's what you need to know. So now I'm going to rotate, pick the same object, hit enter, click that spot. And now I'm not going to care that I don't know where 133 falls. I'm just going to type it in 133.7. And that's where it falls. Because I know that it started from vertical, I know that's where to stop my vertical line. I just draw it back in. No worries. Everything's good to go. I trim off my excess and I'm done. That is my flat pattern for making a cone without accounting for material thickness. That ends this video.